friends, what's up? My name is Joss from Schools Reads and welcome to my May wrap up and June TBR. If y'all are following me on social media, you will know that my May was a super busy month. I focused on a lot of non-bookish things, so I was finishing up the end of my semester and I was going to my friends at graduation. And I did a lot of traveling. I went to BEA in the middle of May and I went to Portland and also to visit Brittany from Under the Radar Books. We actually filmed two videos for her channel and two videos for my channel, so those will be going up sometime in the next couple weeks. I also have some bookish type vlog footage from when I went to Powell's Bookstore in Portland. I'm honestly really happy to be going back to a set schedule for filming and uploading and some sort of normalcy in my life. So being so busy in May did not actually lend itself very well to actual reading. I finished a total of five books and one audiobook. The first book I finished in May was Beasts and Children by Amy Parker. It is a collection of ten short stories which are all pretty dark and focus on three families that are interwoven. We have the Bowmans who live in Texas and they originally come from high status but that is quickly fading. Then we have the Foster family and it focuses on their two daughters who are very privileged and are diplomats daughters but they live in an impoverished neighborhood. The last family is the Guzmans and over two generations they have been traveling back and forth between Colombia and the United States and they have been chasing but never quite achieving the American dream. All of these short stories do have trigger warnings for abuse and violence. They're all a little unnerving and disturbing but Parker writes in a way that is respectful to the material while facing fear and trauma head on and not forcing an optimistic spin. It's like she's really hearing the characters instead of neatly and nicely packaging up their stories for her own benefit. I really really liked this collection and I gave it four stars. The next book I read was Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie and I read this with Jessica from Between Stories. With my love of crime thriller and mystery books you'd think I would have read some Agatha Christie by now but I have not. This was my first one. I've only seen several of her plays which I all enjoyed. Thankfully I loved Murder on the Orient Express as well. Our lead detective is Arcu Poirot and like the title says a murder takes place on a train called the Orient Express. What I liked most was the structure of it. So basically the reader has to find out if the murderer is someone who is already on the train, someone new who boarded the train, or like the staff of the train. It's structured such that in every chapter Poirot interviews another person who was on the train and they give their account of the time of the crime and it's the reader's job to figure out if they are telling the truth or twisting the truth. Me and Jessica were both like freaking out over the ending. It was a total shock. I ended up giving Murder on the Orient Express four stars as well. I also read Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. It's about a girl named Hermione who is a high school cheerleader. She goes off to cheer camp and one night there is a dance and a party. Someone slips something in her drink. The next thing she knows she is woken up from being blacked out for a long time. It turns out that she has been sexually assaulted. So from hearing that plot line it is very similar to what we saw by Erin Hartzler which I read earlier in this year and I gave it four and a half stars. In comparison to what we saw this book focuses more on empowerment. Which is really neither a good or a bad thing because in what we saw they talked a lot about the social issues surrounding rape. These are both necessary things but different takes. In Exit Pursued by a Bear I adored Hermione's best friend who was a really true blue best friend and stuck by her side throughout all of this. This book focuses a lot on the process of going to the doctor after an assault and what takes place there. Because this takes place in a privileged community everything that has to do with like paying for the doctor, finding a doctor, insurance, it's very clean mapped out and there were no struggles there but I like the fact that it highlighted the medical process. The writing itself is a little cold and process centered as opposed to person centered and this is where it lost points for me. I felt so much raw anguish when I was reading what we saw because that book is extremely person centered and while Exit Pursued by a Bear was extremely empowering and almost positive I would recommend what we saw over Exit Pursued by a Bear and I did give it 3.75 stars. At this point in the month I was super in the thick of writing papers and finishing all my finals so I need something really light and breezy and not something that would weigh me down so I chose a memoir written by a previous Bachelor contestant if you guys remember Ben's season. This memoir was written by Courtney Robertson who actually won his season and it is called I'm Not Here to Make Friends. It was a super easy read, a little catty and a little gossipy. Not the most impactful thing in the world but it was exactly what I needed at that time so I ended up giving it three stars. The last physical book that I read in May was The Heart by My Least Day Karen Gall and it was by far my favorite book of the month. It focuses on a 19 year old boy named Simon who after a surfing trip gets into an accident and needs a heart 
heart transplant. This book takes place over the course of one day and we are only with a living Simon for a brief glance of it. We meet the doctor, the nurse who is coordinating the organ donation, and both of Simon's parents. Together they all put together an account of both the medical process and his life. In terms of theme, it focuses a lot, of course, on life and death and meaning making. My favorite part of this book was the writing. She constructs super long sentences, and by long I mean that sometimes they take over the whole page and they use unapologetically a lot of commas and semicolons. However, this served two purposes, the first one being that it emulated a lot of the flow of crashing waves and tides, which really highlight the role of surfing, and secondly, it creates an extremely hectic atmosphere just like it was in the emergency room and in the hospital. The writing created the setting and the tone in such a way that I could like breathe the thickness and the tension in the air. I absolutely loved this and I gave it four and a half stars. Finally, I listened to the audiobook for When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi, which is a memoir. He is a neurosurgeon who was diagnosed with lung cancer at the age of 36 and he passed away in his 40s. Again, a lot of the themes of this book surround life and death and meaning making, but it also focuses on the fact that he was so heavily involved in medicine, basically devoted his life to medicine. I did end up giving it three and a half stars because of a few issues that I did have. The first one and the major one being that I did choose to listen to it on an audiobook. It was narrated by the same guy throughout and his tone didn't really vary a lot so it made it kind of flat to listen to. And I think it became more dry than had I actually read the physical book. I also found that the foreword added after Kalanithi's death didn't really add anything in terms of content setting or sketching out his character. Overall, even though the content of the book was so sad and upsetting, I feel like it could have been even more elevated had the writing style suited that tone. This is exactly the same issue that I had with Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis, which I did finish last month. Okay, so that is all the books that I read in May, and on my June TBR, I do have four books. The first book that I want to read is, of course, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, which was on my May TBR, but I did never get around to it. However, this is a really important book to me because I identify as Asian American, and it does focus on a crime in an Asian American family, so I will get around to this in June. Next, I really want to finish the second book in the Miss Bourne series by Brandon Sanderson, and this is called The Well of Ascension. I was actually supposed to buddy read this with the same group that I read the first one with, however, when I went on my trip, I forgot this book at home, so I haven't actually started it yet. I am also doing a buddy read with Rachel over at The Reader and the Right, and we are reading a short story collection called A Guide to Being Born by Ramona Ossibel, and all of these short stories surround love, gestation, conception, and birth. And lastly, I am also reading And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, also with Jessica from Between Stories. We loved Murder on the Ur Express so much, so we did want to read another Agatha Christie together. So that is it for this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything else, please leave it down below. I am so happy to be back on a regular schedule, so I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!